Hi, Cinderin here with another video for Diablo 4, and we might have made one of the best rogue builds. We've now done Lilith, Doriel, and well, both of them vanished in one rapid fire, and it's looking pretty juicy. I made this build initially because I didn't want to play Twisting Blades, and I just hated the playstyle, but it turns out it's just pretty great, and I swap between this setup where I'm just evading to kill anything on the screen with my Hemomancy combined with Sky Hunter. And Sky Hunter is a bow that a lot of people consider trash. Well, we use it to one hit the entire screen. And then I have a single target setup that I switched to for Duriel. But you can see here that I'm uh, killing a boss in one shot with my AoE farm setup. So you don't actually need to switch, but you can get more damage out of the build if you want to. So, I really enjoyed playing Rogue in Season Zero. I had an absolute blast with it, but I quickly found that the most powerful build, Twisting Blades, was held to play, and I just really didn't enjoy it. Especially while trying to read chat, etc. I felt like it was just really high, like actually having to pay attention. I don't want to pay attention. So, maybe some of you are the same and you just didn't like the playstyle of Twisting Blades, even though you realize it's a lot of damage, and maybe you just like bows like me. Now, I found that Penetrating Shot had insanely good clear, and who doesn't love penetrating your enemies, right? So that was really fun to play, and coupled with the Vampiric Powers, this was an absolute blast. But I quickly started realizing, wow, I have no damage. Like, I had very, very little single target damage. Sure, I was one-shotting the boss in Nightmare Dungeon, but when I was coming to, you know, like the, uh, the mini-bosses and Duriel, I wasn't doing that much, and I felt like I was leeching off my party. And I was like, ah, what if we can find a way to fix this? Well, we did. So now you can see some background footage of bosses and it felt really, really good to finally be able to do a lot of damage. I think we can min-max it further and this isn't going to be like a full complete guy that is min-maxed because frankly, I just don't play Diablo 4 enough to have everything min-maxed. But hopefully this inspires somebody. So I've made one of those D4 builds to do things so you can follow there and I'd hover over all of my gear because I was too lazy to add item stats. And I also swap out some stats, like I swap out some gear for bosses. And I'll talk about my gear quickly here as well. I just want to hover over so you can see what stats I've gone for. Um, it depends a little bit what part of the build. If you want to do nightmare dungeons, you build differently. And if you want to do bosses, you build differently. Debalt's will, absolutely insanely strong. It's just 40% more damage because of vampire powers. You can have permanent unstoppable. And Sky Hunter, this is insanely strong as well because of vampire powers. And Condemnation is just really good. You get the 40% more core damage. So we're just really trying to get those multipliers where we can right now. Now, let's look at the vampire powers because that's pretty important for the build here. I'm using Hemomancy, particularly for clearing. I will swap all of these for single target. Metamorphosis, I'm using this all the time. This is very important and also how we inflict Vampire Curse. Flowing Veins, 60% more damage. Prey on the Weak, 16% more damage. This will also make it permanently vulnerable. So that means that you could technically, as long as you're good at keeping that up, you could remove Fundamental Puncture. Uh, we also have Exploit, but uh, yeah, you have multiple sources of getting vulnerable. Depends how lazy you are. And I keep this all the time. It's so cheap and 3% heal is huge. So why are we using Sky Hunter? Well, the vampire power I'm using, Hemomancy, it does like AoE damage to everything around you. Sky Hunter reads, the first direct damage you deal to an enemy is a crit. Oops. It means that everything is a crit. So I'm basically in my clear form, just running around like this. And you can see it's doing like substantial damage to elites. Um, at a certain point in the build, obviously you're probably stronger with Hemomancy at like around level 70. I was actually getting very close to one-shotting elites. So you can get more damage with that by focusing on damage against healthy enemies, your life, and um, uh, critical damage is obviously very good. See, vulnerable I don't think works, right? Because I'm pretty sure that's against the second hit, whereas we want our first hit to hit. Um, so I have... Got it to do like a little bit over 100,000 damage right now on a rogue, which honestly I think is pretty good. That's like very similar to like what barbs are getting it to. So very, very fun to just run around like this. And because the, um, it's pretty easy to keep track of when the cooldown is too, because the, um, chain over your head is how, um, oops, it's, um, the, uh, unstoppable. So it's easy to keep track of that. Now, the build does rely quite a lot on combo points for its actual single target damage and for the poison imbuement. 
you can see that um, I'm not currently in my like single target, but the form I'm in right now has been enough for things like Duriel and all the other like three mini bosses. I would want to respec for um, what do you call it? I would want to respec for Lilith. So let's go back to town and talk a little bit about the respec. So the main thing that I want to spec in for is I have a X Falls corroded signet. So this changes things because now I want to go for more lucky damage and. Since Skyhunter is only a guaranteed crit against the first time you damage an enemy, and that's kind of annoying with Hemomancy, that's been fine for things like the boss, the Whisper boss over here, and the Electricity boss over here. Like, I, I don't bother swapping for those. I one-shot those, no problem. But uh, if I want to do uh, Lilith, then I want a little bit more. Same when I did a little 100 Nightmare Dungeon. Show you what I switched to. So I switched to an X Falls instead of one of the rings. I also swap out a second ring for more lucky hit chance. I would like more crit too, because rapid fire, I do get one guaranteed crit with concealment, and that does make one entire rapid fire crit. But for each attack after that, and I usually need like three attacks to kill a boss. Kind of crazy to say, actually. So I feel like the build is pretty decent. But uh, yeah, after like three attacks, and obviously like even more if you're playing in a group. And I haven't fi fully decided if it's better to have this or Edge Master. Right now, a critical strike with core seals increase your attack speed by 50%, which is really nice. The reason for that is because obviously I'm instantly getting 50% attack speed. Um, and I need high attack speed to build combo points fast because that does hold us back a lot on damage. And you can see uh, if I hover over rapid fire, you can see it's a pretty big damage there. Uh, it's two additional arrows and just a lot more damage. And also each subsequent arrow from rapid fire has 5% increased critical strike chance up to 40. So it's quite substantial to have those combo points. So this is one of the vampire powers I switched out to. And it was kind of annoying because I couldn't get everything I wanted. So I generally switch out Hemomancy for Pox and that's pretty much all I can get. I did think about having like a curse touch instead of having to go through them, but they're all so expensive. Since we're attacking so much, it's every eight attacks you get a pox on it, and um, yeah, it, it will definitely help with your single target damage. You could technically ditch your leech for the attack speed thing too, which makes movement speed even more valuable. Um, I really like having the leech, especially for hardcore. It heals me up so fast, so been quite enjoying that. But yeah, that's the stuff I've been switching so far. I don't think the Paragon stuff is particularly min-max, but there's also not that much to do, right? There's not that many other ones left. There's only four more boards that we're not using. And uh, yeah, now I'm just stretching for this one, which is just going to be 3% more Poison Rest for Duriel, which I don't really need, but you know, we'll have like 82 Max Rest or something. Another thing you could experiment with for single target is maybe dropping Penetrating Shot entirely, because you do have seven points bundled up here. And I don't know, maybe you can do something with like Trap or Ultimate Trap or something to get even more damage there. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe even like Shadow Clone. Another thing I'm going to experiment with today for bossing is dropping Penetrating Shot and putting points in like Shadow Clone and maybe a little bit of extra lucky hit chance. So we'll play around with that. But again, there's loads of room for experimentation on this build and been really enjoying it. So I hope you will too. So that's pretty much it for this video. Sub if you like it and let me know if you want more Diablo 4 content. Thank you guys all so much for watching. And remember, try to die less than I do.